Welcome to the Living Yoga Series. My name is Darren Main. Um, we're going to be talking about gurus today. The question I get all the time is, what is a guru? And I get it from all different angles. I get it from people who are fascinated and think it's sort of cool and wonderful to find some guy with a long beard and a robe that comes from India. And I hear a lot from other people who are sort of freaked out by the whole idea. They hear about scandals and that type of thing. And so obviously the guru-disciple relationship is something that's been very traditional in yoga over the years. What is its importance today in modern yoga? So for me, I was raised Roman Catholic and had a number of unsavory experiences, to say the least, um, culminating with uh, the, about the time I was sort of coming out and, and recognizing that there was much about the church that didn't work for me personally, there was also the sex abuse scandal that was happening. And it sort of soured the water. And many of my relatives who were very devout Catholic also left. And so when I found yoga, I was really excited that it was different. It was not a typical religion. It was a place where I could be spiritual but not go to church. And I was really excited by that. And then I started to meet various gurus. And some of them were profoundly inspiring and wonderful and sweet, gentle souls. And others were not. They were unethical in the extreme, more unethical than the average person that you'd meet walking down the street. So I'd like to explore this a little bit. Is it important that you have a guru or even care what a guru is? And if you are going to have a guru, what place should they have in your life and in your yoga practice? The first thing you need to know about gurus is the word guru means from darkness to light. And that is basically what a guru is supposed to do. There are many different personalities, different styles. Um, some are more casual, some more formal, some more tethered to a religion such as Hinduism, others more secular. But all of them, the goal is darkness to light. They're, they're there to find, to help you find and identify the dark places in your heart and mind and shine some light there. Now, some do this really well, others not so much. Others cast a long shadow and create even bigger problems for their followers. The best way I find to understand the guru-disciple relationship is to compare it to a personal trainer at the gym. Just as you can go get a gym membership and go to the gym and start weight training and do just fine, or do some cardio or, or go to boot camp, and you can do all those things at home. But there's something that happens when we work with a trainer. They, they push us harder. They teach us things that we didn't necessarily know. They help us look at areas where we're weak. We tend to, I know for me, when I roll out my yoga mat and left to my own devices, I do all the poses I like and sort of conveniently avoid the ones that I struggle with. So a personal trainer or a yoga teacher, any type of fitness coach, that's what they do. They sort of take, they look at where we're weak, where we're struggling, and then they, they sort of force us to go there. They help us identify those places, but then give us the tools we need to strengthen the areas that are weak. Now, in the case of a guru, a guru is sort of like a spiritual coach. Their goal is to help you look at all the places in your life where there is darkness. And if they do their job well, it's incredibly effective. Just like working with a personal trainer, you can get so much more out of your workouts at the gym because there's someone standing right there helping you navigate what are all these machines, what are these weights, and how do I do it safely? That's what a guru is supposed to do. They're supposed to help you navigate your way through the yoga practice, do it safely, and do it in a way that is tailor-made for you your life, and, and the things that you most struggle with. Now, if you think about that personal trainer, not all personal trainers are the same. Some are really knowledgeable. They're really authentic. They've devoted their life to fitness. They look at the individual, and they do their very best to tailor the workout to that individual's needs. If, a, say, a senior citizen comes in, they work with them in one way. If a, a young athlete comes in, they work with them in another way. And that's great, but then there are also personal trainers and coaches that don't have your best needs at heart. They're, they're sort of pushing you harder than you should be pushed. They're giving you 
um, instructions and exercises that maybe feed their ego instead of helping you develop your body. And those are the ones that you definitely want to avoid. And the same is true for gurus. If you are working with a guru and they are doing things to glorify themselves or lift themselves up and not looking at your best interests first, then you should not walk away from that guru. You should run as quickly as you can. Now, you should trust your guru. Absolutely. In the same way you should trust your personal trainer. But if your personal trainer one day said, I'm going to have you bench press 100 pounds more than you've ever bench pressed before, and you were already struggling with the weight you were using, hopefully there's a part of your mind that kicks in and says, this is not a good idea for me. This is not a safe place for me to go. I don't know what's up with the trainer, but I'm not going to listen to him. There should be that part of your mind when you have a relationship with any kind of a guru or spiritual teacher. If they're telling you to do something that you know in your heart is not good for you, you should be looking for someone else or you'd be better off doing it on your own. So to sum it up, a guru is there to bring you from darkness to light. If they're indeed doing their job, you will accelerate your spiritual path. You will accelerate your healing. But if they are operating from their ego, telling you to do things that make them feel good about themselves instead of you feeling better and better about yourself, then that's a very dangerous place. And you should never enter into a relationship with a guru or anyone else for that matter where you don't maintain some sense of personal will, the ability to say, you know what, this isn't working for me. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, I know the whole guru thing can be really weird with all the scandals. Some of it is weird and some of it is profoundly helpful. If you enjoyed this video and found this video helpful, I hope you will take a moment to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and Twitter. I hope you will also check out my books on Amazon and soon to be Audible. And I hope you will consider um, using Patreon. I have a Patreon page. If you'd like to financially support these videos and some of the other work I do, I'd really appreciate it. Finally, you can get in contact with me and see an archive of all these videos as well as our podcast at thelivingyogaseries.com. I'll link to that in the show notes, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Namaste.